Jackson Overton. I am a, an artist and a member of uh, Carolina Design Craftsman. I make hand-tinted black and white photographs. I print the black and white photographs in my darkroom, and I paint on top of them with Marshall's photo oil paints. And I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, I take the black and white photo. I have two prints of the same picture here. Here's the print. It's a wide lux photograph I took of a cemetery statue in England a few years back. I uh, tape it to my desk, and then I take a border around the edges of the photograph so I won't get paint outside of the photograph's edges. Otherwise, I spend a lot of time cleaning it up and that's a bit of a bother. A piece of tape. And as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about the colors that I want to paint onto the photograph. I've done one before, and I did the statue's robe kind of an aqua color with just a regular flesh tone. Um, I'm going to try and do something a bit different today. So, let me see. I think I will maybe try for a... Huh. Give it a little bit of thought here. I think maybe I'll do sort of a, a pale green type robe, which sounds kind of bizarre, but I think I can make that work. So, let me get some green out. Sometimes... Oh, there we go. I've got enough of a grip here. Sometimes these little things are hard to open up. So, this is the paint. It's like little tubes of oil paint and they are transparent on the photo. It's made specifically for, okay, sorry, I need my magic pinchers here. <laughs> All right, here we go. I need my magic pinchers to open this up. There we go. And so there we go. A bit of sepia. Uh, I'll do a bit of Take a toothpick and mix a little bit of sepia into the green. And I'll also take some of the sepia and mix it into the red. It's nice not to have the colors be right out of the <clears throat> tube because they're awfully bright. They're kind of neon. So here we go. I'm just going to put this on here. And basically what I do is I just rub it in to the picture. There we go. There'll be a little bit of um, green on it already, and I'll put some red into the shadows. And I don't really know the technical reason for this, I just know that you know it might be an interesting effect. Give it like a little bit of um, maybe depth or something. kind of eerie. Let's see. So in all the shadowy areas, I'll have this kind of red going on. That says to me now, maybe, I might not even want like a flesh color for the skin tone. I might end up making the statue's face and hand kind of almost a bluey color, like blue ice sort of thing. Colors get a lot lighter, but it also becomes a lot greasier, so you really can't put a lot of color on top of color that has extender on it already. Okay, so here we go. I've got this here now. We'll see how this works. It might end up being kind of weird. But I like it all right. So the hand is bluish. And the hair as well. And I think I'll actually make the um, hair sort of sepia. smaller areas. Just go in with a Q-tip. Come back out. I can go over that later with, the nut, with some more of the uh, blue. 
I think I'll probably go in and make this face give it a little bit of like color definition just for fun. You know, just kind of do a little bit of extra stuff to make the person seem more real. Like that. Just give us some sort of fleshy highlights. It makes it more beautiful and then more creepy at the same time. And once again, fleshy shadow indication. Alright. Now the last thing I'm going to do, pretty much, is the, um, the ceiling. So since I've done sort of green and blue, I think I'll have a dark brown ceiling. And that's it. There we go. And what I can do is, I will do one more thing actually though. I'm going to make this a little bit dark right here. Because that's kind of